In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can hardwire a dash cam into your car. So let's get on with it. Roll titles. Welcome to the channel if it's your first time here and welcome back if it's not. Now that's correct. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can hardwire a dash cam into your car. Now this is going to be a bit of a general guide because obviously everyone's car is different. And if you're watching this from outside the UK, it's going to be completely different because more than likely my steering wheel is going to be on the opposite side of the car to yours. And that might have some impact on the wiring and everything like that. And obviously you're doing this at your own risk. If you do this and mess up your car, I accept no responsibility for it. It's your own stupid fault. Now, first of all, we need a dash cam. I've got one of those and I did a video about it. I'll stick a link to it up there. It's actually pretty good. I'm relatively happy with it. The second thing we need is a hard wiring kit. And I have got this one. Now, there are many different types of these. I'll stick a link to this or one very similar to it in the description so you can take a look, but it all does depend on the type of dash cam you've got and also the type of car. Now, this kit is interesting that if you wire it to a permanent live feed from your battery, so therefore that means it's always on, as opposed to an ignition on feed, which only comes on when your ignition switch is on, this will carry on charging your camera even when the car is off. But to stop you from ending up with a dead battery, it's actually got some kind of sensing circuit in here that realizes that the voltage is below 12 volts and it will cut off the power supply so it doesn't drain your battery anymore. Now that's obviously ideal if you've got a dash cam that can work constantly and you want constant recording, I'm not going to wire mine up that way. I don't really want constant recording. If the electronics in this fails and it just carries on discharging my battery, I don't want to turn up to my car one day and the battery's completely flat. I'm sure it won't happen, but I don't really need my dash cam recording constantly, even when I'm away from the car. So this is only going to be powered when the ignition is on but we'll talk a little bit more about that when we're at the car. Please make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm sure this video is going to help you. And if it doesn't, if you like it, it will share it to someone who hopefully will find it very useful. But this should be useful to pretty much anyone who owns a car, unless they've got a dash cam installed already. But never mind that, let's get in the box. So what do we get in this kit? Uh, we get some fuses, we get some fuse carriers, we'll talk about those in a second. We get an adapter, we get a trim removal slash shimmying tool, we get a fuse puller, and then we actually get the kit itself. So how does this work? Essentially, got a mini USB connector and this will plug into your dash cam and then it's got a cable of, I think it's a couple, I think it's two or three meters, which runs from it. And then it runs into this transformer box that will knock the voltage down from 12 volts or 24 volts that the car or truck is supplying and put it out into a nice five volts that your dash cam requires. And then on the other side, we have got the sort of voltage in from the car. Now it's got an inline fuse holder, which is really handy. And also we've got these two connectors at the end. Now this is the negative terminal. Essentially on cars, generally, if they're made of metal, the car body is the negative terminal. It's sort of grounded. You just need to find a grounded bit of metal work on your car for this to attach to. And if you're installing it in the fuse box, there's usually one pretty close by. Now this is the positive terminal, and this is where these guys come in. So this kit is designed for a multitude of cars and a multitude of fuse boards. And how we're going to wire this is, it's going to tap off a fuse in the fuse box. Now one of the fuse boxes for my car is actually in the glove box on the passenger side. So I'm going to tap off one of those fuses. And essentially what you do is you take the fuse out of the fuse box you pop it into the bottom here, and then you get one of these fuses that's been supplied into the kit and put it into the upper one. And then, yeah, you just take this 
or whichever one is suitable for your fuse box and plug it into here, squeeze them together and that's it connected. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you, I don't know which kind of fuses are in my car's fuse box yet. It might be this one or it might be one of these smaller ones. I don't know, but that's the beauty of this kit. It should cover pretty much any car there is and uh, cover the main fuse sizes that there are. Now for my car, which is a Renault Capture, it's got the facility to have more than one cigarette lighter socket. So I think there's either one in the back or the boot that you could spec with the car and there's a fuse socket position available for it. So I'm going to use that. Now obviously which fuse socket you use on your car is completely up to you. I'd say piggyback it off a cigarette lighter socket or accessory socket as they're called now and you should be golden but if in doubt don't speak to someone who knows what they're doing and please don't ask me about your car in the comments because I won't know. I just know my car and I've just researched my car. Now in this kit it comes with an adapter to take the mini USB and turn it into a micro USB should you wish. You just plug it in like that and if you've got a micro USB connector on your dash cam you'd use that. As I said at the start of the video there are so many of these kits around and some dash cams have USB-C connectors now and so you'd just get one with a USB-C connector on. It all depends on your car and your dash cam. So this works for my car, it might not work for your car. I'd advise to double check everything before you go spending money. So yeah, the general idea of this is this will be in the headlining where my dash cam is and go round and we'll route it round down one of the pillars and round towards the glove box where the fuse box is and hopefully we can tap off one of the fuses here and connect this to a bit of body that's grounded here and it will work. So I guess what we should do now is stop talking and go out to the car probably on a different day because it's a bit wet out there and uh, we'll get this installed and go from there and see how it works. So. Uh, See you outside in a second. We're in the car now and uh, we need to get this installed. So my dash cam is up here. It's just slightly out of shot. Now my dash cam comes with a really handy little base that transfers the power to it. So there's not actually a wire dangling down to the dash cam. It goes into the base. Obviously yours will be different. So what we're going to do first before we get too involved and tidy wires and things like that is we're just going to do a bit of a sanity check I suppose and make sure that the kit we've ordered is actually all working because it would be absolutely dreadful to spend ages routing the cables and tidying everything away to find that it doesn't work. So yeah we're just gonna do a sort of test fit I suppose and see how things go. So here we've got the connector that's going to go into our dash cam and then on the other end we've got the wiring that's going to go down to our fuse box. Now I do apologise in advance because it's such a small space it's going to be quite hard to film so I will do my best but yeah it's not going to be like very high production values unfortunately. Right so let's get that plugged in like that and then we've got the we'll just have the wire dangling down. So we've got our red positive wire that is going to go to our fuse jumper connection and we've got our black negative wire which is going to go to a ground point on the car. I'll show you where mine is on my car. Now please 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 just remember your car might be very different to this. Even if you've got a Renault Capture like mine you might find some differences so you know just bear that in mind. Okay so we've got to go in the glove compartment of my car and here is the fuse box. There we go, let's get that out of the way. Now I know for a fact if I take this bit of cover off, actually well let's take off all the covers because we're going to need to. So there's a bit of side access there. Now originally I was going to use this screw hole here or this one down here as a grounding point but I don't need to do that because on my car look down here we've got this guy and this is metal and it's actually grounded to the chassis so I've connected my multimeter to this point here 
and a bit of the chassis up here and there's continuity so this is a ground so we'll be able to put our black connector onto this now in my car i'm going to go off this 15 amp fuse here and that is for the cigarette lighter now you might remember i said that i was going to go off an accessory socket and this is why it's really important to double check everything because my car doesn't actually have that accessory socket fuse location it was a different diagram for a slightly different version of this car so yeah this is the one we're looking at this one here the blue 15 amp fuse that is the fuse for our cigarette lighter so we need to pull that fuse out there we go fuses out and this is our fuse jumper connection now i've already put in the top position the fuse that came with my kit and in the bottom position here we need to put that 15 amp fuse in so there we've got something like that so now we've just got to reseat this back in here so there we go it's plugged in and now we've got this that should hopefully be 12 volts when we turn the ignition on so let's just double check that actually and ignition is off and no voltage is going through it let's make the ignition turn on there we go ignition is on and we've got nice steady 12 volts into it perfect yep ignition off voltage go down cool so now we've got to get this guy here around here there we go that is connected onto there i just need to join this guy into here lovely so that is our connections made just temporarily to make sure this works so in theory now if i turn on the ignition the dash cam should fire into life. There we go, it's got power. And it's turned on, perfect. So now we're going to need to route the cable around the car. So my idea is it's going to come along here under the headlining, down here, and I'm either gonna take this off, this panel here, and run it down inside here, or I'm just going to run it across the top here and down into this rubber seal. I'm going to see how easy it is to remove this because they can be a little bit tricky. And also when you're doing this, sometimes you might find that there's an airbag in these pillars. Mine does not have an airbag, so that's fine. But obviously if you're poking around with airbags, then yeah, you just got to be careful basically. If I don't take this off, we're just going to put the wire into the rubber seal here and then down and through now we're going to start up here to start with because obviously we don't want to tidy it up all down here and then come back up here and there's a load of excess cable we have to hide it's a lot easier to hide the cable down here than it is to hide it up here so yeah we've just got to sort of push the cable in under the headlining with a sort of plastic spudgery tool just to get the headlining down a little bit and the cable to go into it. So while past Kip is putting the cable in the headlining and in the pillar, let's have a shout out to all those people who've joined the channel. So first up, we've got those Kip fans who are Matt Lovey's JRC Electrical for the Burbs, Mark C, Wayne Cornish, Mike Cass, Rob Lynn, Tony Arnold, and Scott made a thing. Then we've got those amazing early birds who are Roberta Gross, the, 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 Dean Ball, Sean at Cablesmith Electrical, Wayne's Retro World, Tim Salt, and Sorcerer Stan. And we've got these guys who I love so much. They are our kit lovers, and they are Bella Webster and Stez Sticks Flipping Fix. And she's still here. She is our wonderful, lovely kit nutter, and that is Becky Becky Boobar. Thank you so much for your support, Becky, and all my other channel members. Why not hit the join button below and become one of these cool people that get a shout out? Anyway, let's get back on with the video. Okay, so it's quite hard to see, but the cable is tucked in behind here and then it runs down and then it sort of leaps across and goes slightly under this bit of plastic 
and we're going to use the rubber door seal here to hide it in. Okay, so yeah, it's just a case of bringing all the cable down, getting it nicely behind everything. Okay, so you can sort of see the cable running down here under the glove box and up and there's a sort of space here that's easily accessible so i'm going to mount the transformer onto here i'm going to find something sticky like some velcro or something like that and uh, mount the transformer here because there's all this excess cable as well so we've got to do something with that and then i've undone the ground connection because yeah, I'm just gonna feed that back under as well. So it's sort of tucked out, out of the way. But yeah, it's actually pretty straightforward, really. Very difficult to film. So I'm just gonna get on with it and mount the transformer here. And uh, yeah, tuck the wires away somewhere. Yes, okay, back in a mo. Okay, so now we have the finished job. So our earth cable comes out and round and underneath and up into here. And uh, yeah, I've tidied it all away the best I can. I've used some cable ties. I've used some really heavy duty Velcro to hold the transformer onto the side of the glove box. And that actually looks pretty good. I'm pleased with that. So I guess what we've got to do now is just get the covers back on. There we go. Nicely done, not snagged the cable, perfect. And then just this guy. Perfect. So there we go, finished job. Can't really see anything at all. Just all very tidy. And uh, yeah, no wires. Well, I guess the big test now is to see if it actually works. Oh, <laughs> there we go. I'm really happy with that. It's made the car a lot neater because I had the wire sort of stuffed roughly like this, but it was always a bit loose and flappy and fell down. And also the added bonus is it leaves the cigarette lighter socket free for my Apple CarPlay screen, which I've done a video about, which I'll stick in the corner. Now, please do remember, I think I said this earlier, but I can't offer assistance for how to wire it into your specific car. I know how to do it in my car now, but your car, got no idea. So please don't stick in the comments section questions about how do I do it on a 1999 Vauxhall Astra or something like that, because I can't help you. The, I, the guide is roughly the same for everyone, but it all depends on your car. So yeah. If this video has been helpful to you, then please do give it a like and maybe subscribe as well. But well, I don't think I've got anything else to say, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, it's game over.